on reading a recent Greek poet. After the wailing had already begun, along the walls, their ruin certain, the Trojans fidgeted with bits of wood. In the three ply doors, itsy bitsy, pieces of wood, fussing with them, and began to get their nerve back and feel hopeful. Special Green Room guest this afternoon is Mademoiselle Billie Holiday, recording artist for Clef Records. Good afternoon, Mademoiselle Holiday. Hello, George. I might add that it is a most pleasant experience to see that you are as personable in person as you are in your famous recordings. Thank you. We always like to ask our guests a question and we like to compare their answers. Billy, I wonder if you could answer for us, what is jazz? Well, to me, jazz is good music and a good feeling and I'd like to say that everybody can't play jazz and no one person originated it no one person uh, created I think you just have to have it in you or do you concur have to feel it in other words do you concur with our guests thus far, then, that uh, jazz must uh, be tied in pretty closely with improvising? That's right. I understand, Billy, that you have uh, enlarged your scope of talents, not only to include fine singing, but you've also written a book called The Lady Sings the Blues. I understand, too, that it's a bestseller. Yes, I'm very happy about it. And uh, it was we tried to get it, and out here in L.A. and it was all sold out in Chicago and New York and they're making up some new ones. You mean you couldn't buy a copy of your own book? I never read it yet. <laughs> Every one I get, my friends take it away from me. I'll bet they take it away autographed too. Did you uh, actually write the book or did you hire a writer to write it for you? No, I, uh, a friend of mine uh, uh, Dufty is his name. He's a co-editor for the Post in New York, Post newspaper. And, uh, well, to uh, make a long story short, my husband, one night we were talking and people had been writing things about me and getting them all wrong and all screwed up. I won't mention the newspapers or the magazines, bless them. So my husband said, why don't you write a book and tell your side? So I uh, went to Bill and he got the typewriter and it took us about two, three months and I just told him he wrote. That's how the book came about. You make it sound so simple and I'm sure it was a lot of work and, and a lot of inspiration. Billy, you've described jazz uh, somewhat as being a good feeling. Do you have any particular recordings of your own that uh, had this good feeling when you made them? Yeah, I, I don't like very many of my records though because there's always something I should have did, some note I should have been, some word I should have said, <laughs> I should have slowed down, I went faster. But uh, I, I, uh, I like other people's records, Duke Alton, and I'm Crazy About Allen, and Louis Armstrong, they're my favorites. But my records, I know. <laughs> well, I think you're being too critical of your own recordings, uh, Billy. I, I think that, that they're certainly most enjoyable to listen to, despite the fact that you wish you had another chance at them. Billy, what is new? What, do, what are your plans for the immediate future? Well, uh, when we leave here, we go to Honolulu, and then we go to... Where do we go? Oh, that's right. We have a concert. Isn't it an outdoor affair First, uh, so concert outdoors, and then we go to Camden, New Jersey, and then we go to Europe. 
Well, this is a vacation trip to Europe, or no, honey, no vacations, all work. Well, that's wonderful. That's I vacation while I work, you know. <laughs> well, I know you like to sing because you couldn't sing so well if you didn't like it. Do you like to do anything else particularly? Well, I yeah, try to um, learn to play golf. My husband's a golf fiend, and, but I like the other thing that he likes, that's fishing. But the only thing I like about it is to sit in the boat and eat hot dogs and drink beer and scream when he catches a fish. And you hope that you don't <laughs> catch any fish? No, I think they wiggle too much. I'm afraid to take them off the hook. <laughs> Well, I've got to ask you the perennial question then, Mademoiselle Holiday. Who puts the worm on the hook? My husband. He baits your hook for you. Sure, I'm afraid of them. They wiggle. You afraid of everything that wiggles? I don't like them. Well, did he ever introduce you to the, the type of uh, bait that is actually mechanical, a little silver stick? Yes, and, and uh, he never introduced me, but uh, he bought this little kit. And nosy me, I went and opened it to see what was inside. And those things are so real, it's getting me to death. I must have threw it a mile. <laughs> <laughs> you thought he brought home a box full of bugs? <laughs> I certainly did. Well, that's wonderful. And, and where is your favorite fishing spot? Well, we've been all over Canada and Detroit, out here and in um, Miami. He went out in the Everglades. To go fishing? And in a little boat and went over an alligator's back. And a storm came up and I was praying. He got home with a box full of fish. <laughs> oh, Billy, that's wonderful. Where's your favorite singing spot? Do you have one of those? Well, no, but uh, no, no, no favorite singing spot. I'm at Jersey City now. In fact, I was. I closed last night. But I like, mostly like Carnegie Hall. You know, concerts, because people really listen to you in those places, you know. Nobody's drinking or smoking. You know. They concentrate, you know. And next to the concerts, I like nightclubs, because everybody's happy and head of the ball. <laughs> what do you Even feel? I don't care too much about it. it scares me. Do you feel there's a difference between the audience that you might encounter in Los Angeles, a jazz city, for example, or New York, or Honolulu? Or oh, there's a difference in audience all over the country. Well, how do you please the audiences all over the country so well, then? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> what is the fundamental difference? Well, I don't know. And what is that, uh, Eddie Kent, uh, somebody said, they love me in Boston. <laughs> so I, I really don't know. Well, would because you sing? People have been nice to me all over so far. Would you sing different songs in uh, New York than you would in Los Angeles or Honolulu? No. You'd program the same numbers. Yes, because I go by uh, my public. They ask me, you know, as a rule, before I go on. They'll ask for like a tune I wrote. Don't explain. They'll ask for that. They'll ask for Strange Fruit. Sing the blues, Billy. You know. So I go by them. I try to please them. Well, one way to certainly please your listeners is to hear one of your cleft recordings called Please Don't Talk About Me While I'm Gone, and one that I'm sure warrants many requests when you make an appearance. Now.
Another selection by our special green room guest, Mademoiselle Billy Holiday, from the Clef album just released called Velvet Moon. I understand they're going to release another album of yours in the very near future, Billy. I understand. Oh, Velvet Mood. Yeah, I tried to well, before, but she didn't pay me attention. Oh. <laughs> well, I just thought you were worrying over there. <laughs> Are we rolling, Dick? Another selection by our special green room guest this afternoon, Mademoiselle Billie Holiday, from the new Clef album, Velvet Mood. Billy, I understand they're going to release another album of yours in the near future. Yes, they are, and I had some swell cats on there with me. Wonderful. Who was backing you up on that? Oh, I had Benny Carter... And an alto and Harry Edison trumpet, John Simmons bass, and Jimmy Rowe on piano, Barney Castle. We had a ball. Well, they certainly are some swell cats, as you so aptly put it. I understand, too, that they're going to release a uh, song about your book. It carries the same title. Yes, uh, I wrote uh, a little melody called Lady Sings the Blues. Well, we'll certainly be looking for that. Billy, it certainly has been a pleasure to meet you and to be able to chat with you in person in the green room this afternoon. We hope that you'll stop by and see us again real soon. I will, and thank you. Drinking alone. I take my wine jug out among the flowers, to drink alone, without friends. I raise my cup to entice the moon. That, and my shadow, makes us three. But the moon doesn't drink, and my shadow silently follows. I will travel with moon and shadow, happy to the end of spring. When I sing, the moon dances. When I dance, my shadow dances, too. We share life's joys when sober. Drunk, each goes a separate way. Constant friends, although we wander, we'll meet again in the Milky Way.
This is my letter to the world, that never wrote to me. The simple news that nature told, with tender majesty. Her message is committed to hands I cannot see. For love of her, sweet countrymen, judge tenderly of me. In the beginning, in fact, we thought God really messed up, you know, putting us together. But we survived because we're survivors and you're all survivors and you're going to make it. You're going to really like each other. I'm telling you, you're going to like each other by the time you get there. How exactly do you think that having an affair would help our marriage? <laughs> 